In this video, I will be covering dog body language and behavior, specifically calming signals, which are subtle stress signals dogs use as they approach more overt, aggressive behavior. What's up guys, it's Jenna with Dog Liaison where I coach you on how to enhance your dog's mental health and on this channel we break down scientific research in order to inform us on how to educate and train dogs. Today's video is part two of a four part series on dog behavior and dog body language. We are covering overt stress signals in part one, calming signals today, and in the upcoming videos we're talking about appeasing and displacement behaviors. So if you are interested in seeing those upcoming videos, make sure you hit subscribe. If you haven't seen part one already, I will link it at the end of this, box, at the end of this video as well. If you are watching this video well into the future, then I have linked all four videos in the description box below and at the end of this video so that you can watch all of them, one right after the other, and we're getting started right now. Now, calming signals sound like kind of a good thing, but they actually happen as a result of stress. Um, specifically, why we call them calming signals is because the dog is trying to calm themselves. You wanna think of it kind of like a stress ball for humans, right? The idea is that they are channeling that stress, channeling that tension, and putting it into a healthier solution in lieu of aggression. Calming signals commonly happen before the dog goes over threshold. They can happen while the dog is over threshold as well, but you are more likely to see these as precursor signals. I think that calming signals are the most overlooked behaviors, but they are also the most informative. And once you know what to look for, you can prevent your dog from going over threshold in the first place. One thing that I do want to remind you that I talked about in part one is that dog body language is highly contextualized and that depending on the you know the context and the circumstance and the individual dog the meaning can be different so the analogy i always use is the different tone so you can say go to your room or you can say go to your room and depending on the inflection they mean two different things so with that in mind, I do want you to understand that I'm talking in broad terms today, I'm talking in general terms today, and you know, you're know you going to find that some of the things, most of the things I say directly apply to you, but I don't want you to feel like it 100% wholeheartedly does. It's incredibly important that you think in these in a much grander scale, and then on your own, you learn your dog's individual habits. But for the purpose of this video, I wanna talk about in the calming signals in terms of objective and observable behaviors and factual scientific research first. And then in the second half of this video, I will be imposing my own subjectivity um, and the consensus of the research community and consensus of the positive reinforcement training at least. Um, and so we're gonna be talking about it in two different capacities. One is the more factual, one is the more subjective. Let's get started. So calming signals actually originally started with a woman named Turid Raga, who I'm going to link her website in the description box below. She's a wonderful resource. She does have a book. It's a very small book. And if you are looking for a much more in-depth analysis of dog body language, particularly as it pertains to stress, I highly recommend you you look into getting that book. Turid Raga is a wonderful resource and um, I can't speak highly enough about that book. We wanna think in terms of the objective of the dog when he's going through these common signals is hazard avoidance like we spoke about in the first video um, and this is meant to de-escalate tension it is meant to release tension that is why we call them calming signals so some common calming signals that you may find are the lip lick a yawn teeth clacking heavy scanning the shake off sniffing the ground turning the head away and panting or heavy breathing. The lip lick tends to happen on top of the nose. It tends to, as opposed to going across the face, and it tends to be very fast. Um, it's not usually like a big, like clean up the face moment. It is fast and quick and on top of the nose. The yawn tends to happen with the eyes closed. It tends to happen with a sound. They usually go, right? And they usually close their eyes and it's very big and dramatic. Teeth clacking is less common and it usually happens with heavy scanning. Heavy scanning results when the dog is looking in a lot of places but isn't actually seeing. So you may see him moving his head a whole lot but he's not actually taking in information. The shake off resembles when a dog is wet and they actually shake off that, you know, wet dog 
behavior, um, but they'll do this when they're perfectly dry. It usually happens right after a tense moment, so the dog has been holding on to a lot of tension, has been stiff like we talked about in the first video, and now they're going to shake it all off. Sniffing lowers the heart rate. There's a wonderful study that I don't want to go deep down into in this particular video. It will be used in future videos, um, but there's a wonderful study that I really recommend you check out. It, the link is in the description box below, but it demonstrated how dogs use their nose to calm themselves to lower their heart rate. Turning the head away is when the dog looks into a different direction than the stimulus. This is usually indicative of disinterest, but it also requires an amount of trust. It requires the dog to be particularly vulnerable. Anytime that a dog turns their back to a stimulus, they're at least to some degree trusting that the stimulus isn't going to come charging at them. Panting and heavy breathing results as a byproduct of escalated heart rate. It is fairly common. Okay, so now we have talked about the behaviors in the most objective way. Now I'm going to start giving you a little bit more insight into what these behaviors mean. And remember, this is all subjective. Um, you know, this does tend to be the consensus around the educated community. But I think it's important that you know that there's a difference between what we know for certain and what we speculate. And what I'm about to tell you are just things that we speculate based off of education. So the lip lick usually indicates a lack of confidence. That doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. For example, if I'm teaching a new puppy to sit and they give me a lip lick, or if I'm teaching a new dog to walk nicely on the leash and they give me a lip lick, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, all hell's about to freeze over. It doesn't necessarily mean everything is about to come undone. It just indicates to me that the dog is showing me I don't completely feel like I have all the information. I feel like I still have questions. So, for example, if you're in the middle of a training session and your dog gives you that lip lick, as opposed to a lip lick that has to do with the Pavlovian response to food, that's different. But if it's about stress, if it's about a calming signal, it's that quick up on the nose fast, then it's usually indicative of a dog that's just saying, I'm not ready to move forward because I don't feel like I have a solid foundation on what we're even doing right now. So if you start to raise the criteria when they're demonstrating that, then likely it's all gonna fall apart because he just told you he still has questions at this degree. So the yawn and the teeth clacking are usually indicative of, hey, this is getting harder. I don't know how much longer I can take this. The, the teeth clacking is less common. Not very many dogs do it, but it usually goes like, right? It's usually indication that this is really getting much more stressful and we need to de-escalate this situation. We need to lower the criteria of the environment. The shake off is a way for the dog to say, oh my God, thank that God that's over. Let's not do that again. That was really tense. Personally, I like the shake off. Personally, I look for it. It is a healthy way for a dog to cope with stress. We encourage that. However, it's still a stress signal. It's still the dog telling you that this was really challenging and that that caused a lot of tension. So the shake off will usually lead next into panting and breathing heavy. But the one thing that I will tell you about panting is that because it just means that the heart rate is higher, that can happen for so many different reasons. I mean, anything can look high, raise the heart rate. So panting alone doesn't usually tell me specifically how stressed the dog is. It aids, it gives me a hint, it's one of the things that I first look for, but alone on its own, panting isn't a very reliable source to tell you how stressed your dog is. You have to look at these other contexts, you have to look for these other calming signals or stress signals in order for you to really know uh, what the dog is experiencing and how and how stressed they actually are. Turning the dog's head away or having him disengage, you know, having the dog look in a different direction than the stimulus is another healthy way of disengaging, of telling the stimulus, hey, I want you to stay over there. I don't really want you to approach over here. If, if you stay over there, we're chill. But if you come closer or if I have to engage with you, then that'll be much more difficult. Usually when dogs turn their heads away or disengage, they also resolve to sniffing. That's very common. Sniffing is a wonderful way to lower the heart rate. I encourage it. I think it's wonderful. One thing that I encourage people to recognize though is that just because the dog's nose is on the ground in one spot doesn't necessarily mean they're thinking about that spot. 
often the dogs will turn their heads away and put their nose over here, but they're actually sniffing far away. So you can think of that like when you're eavesdropping at the, at the restaurant, you know, you might hear a conversation behind you. You're gonna look ahead and you're not gonna look at the conversation, but you're definitely listening to it. That's commonly what ends up happening with sniffing. If you see a dog doing this where they're not paying attention to you, do not approach them, do not engage with them, leave them alone. Uh, and if your dog is disengaging from the stimulus, is looking away from the stimulus, be your dog's voice if a person starts approaching or if your dog starts approaching them to stand up and say, hey, my dog doesn't necessarily want that right now. They're doing their thing, maybe another time. If you enjoyed this particular video, make sure you tell me by hitting like. If you want to see the rest of the series, make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you guys soon.